Just like the phrase, there's more than one way to skin a cat, well, there's more than one way to sell a house. So if you're interested, that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm Carol Ann Reed with The Real Deal, where we give you the confidence and the clarity that you need to make the right real estate decisions for you. And if you like this kind of content, feel free to go right down below and hit the subscribe button. Today, we are going to be talking about different options that you have available to you when you want to sell your house. You have more options than just hiring a real estate agent and and selling it on the MLS in the traditional way that most people do. You do have options. So let's take a look. So your first option is the MLS, the traditional way. Hire an agent, have them put the listing on the MLS. And also I'm going to include for sale by owner in this, FISBOs, because most of the time those end up on the MLS as well. You just haven't hired an agent. Uh, Certainly this is the biggest audience that you will have to sell your house because that's where most people go to look for their houses. So that certainly is a pro, um, but you do have cons. There are fees, lots of fees and commissions and closing costs and things like that. Um, that is your traditional way, but there are other ways. Your second option would be the eye buyer. Those are people like Open Door and Zillow and Redfin. They're kind of a new way to do it because technology has has come so far so fast. Um, they work off of what's called an AVM, an automated valuation model. So they take the information from county records and the 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 the, 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 the information from the home sales that have happened around you in your neighborhood. Their model builds an idea of what your house would be worth based on your specs and your neighborhood, and they will offer you a price right away. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that generally those offers are anywhere between like 7 to 15% under what that AVM number is, because they need to make a profit too, and you need to know that they are going to send somebody out, an actual person, to come and look at the house to make sure that what you've told them is true. And when that happens, they're going to find repairs and things that need to be made. And chances are really good that that AVM number that they gave you, or I'm sorry, that that offer that they gave you is going to come down. They're going to ask for concessions for the repairs that need to be made. Just something that you need to be aware of. And the last thing that you need to know is that they will offer only on certain types of properties because that AVM only really works in an area where houses are pretty much all the same. Your house has to pretty much be the same. So it's going to have restrictions like, um, they'll only offer on houses that are between a hundred and say four hundred thousand dollars. Um, it can't be a distressed property and on something that's on less than like a half an acre. The third way to do it is something that most people probably have never heard of, and that's called subject to. And that means subject to existing financing. And that is where an investor comes in and basically just takes over your mortgage and starts making those payments for you. Now, generally, they don't pay you a down payment for that. So it's really in a case where somebody just needs to get out of that mortgage, have somebody else start making those payments. Um, but this one is a little bit different. So it's very important that you go uh, consult a real estate professional about it, real estate lawyer probably, make sure that that contract is airtight because that investor is going to get the title to the house. So all you will have is that that contract that you've signed saying that they are going to make those payments. It is a good deal in the right situation. Just make sure that you consult some sort of real estate professional to make sure that all your I's are dotted and T's are crossed. The fourth way is an option that lots of people have heard of, and that is contract for deed. And that is where you as the seller basically become the bank. The buyer gives you a down payment. You guys can negotiate the uh, all of the payment terms, the amount of the, the monthly payment, the interest rate, um, that down payment amount, and the length of the loan. And then at that point, the seller will keep legal title to the property, but the buyer gets equitable title. So they do get a stake in that house until that contract is fulfilled. So if you don't need all your money up front, 
this is a really great option. The next way, of course, is to go right down below and hit that like button. And the fifth and last way that I have for you today is the cash and wholesale options. Now, everyone is pretty much familiar with cash. It's cash. Uh, cash works great in the right circumstances. If you need to get out fast, you can be out in seven to 10 days. Um, generally, there are no inspections or if there are city mandated inspections, you may not be held responsible for what those inspections may find. Uh, you may be able to leave behind anything in the house that you don't want to take and the person buying it will clear it all out for you. So in the right circumstances, it really is an awesome option. And if you want to know how to find those people who will buy it for cash, obviously you can go onto Google and search cash house buyers and you'll come up with a lot of stuff. Or if you don't want to go to we buy ugly houses because they uh, you're just not sure about them, you certainly can call your area real estate investor association. Every major met metropolitan area will have one. You can certainly give them a call and they should be able to give you a ton of names of investors who will be willing to talk to you about buying your house. Now, aside to this is the wholesale option. Wholesaling is basically a cash deal, but you are working with somebody who's going out to find that investor for you. So they'll go out and find the investor and they will just take a finder's fee in the middle. So you don't have to go and do all that research to find somebody uh, to, find, to buy your house for you. The one thing that you need to know is just make sure that you know which deal that you're working with because a lot of companies will come and tell you, yes, it's a cash deal, but if you look at the fine print, it's really not a cash deal. It's a wholesale deal. If they can't close in seven to 10 days, that means that they're going out. They need extra time to go out and find that investor for you. Not a big deal. I just want you to know what kind of deal that you're dealing with to make sure that that person is on the up and up. And just to give you an example of what you should be looking for, I am a licensed real estate agent under a brokerage, but I also work with a company who is an investment company. So when people call us, I can go out to that house and I tell them, here is my cash offer. We also have an, a wholesale option. Here is a different number for that wholesale option. So we are right up front with them and let them know that the cash option and the wholesale option are different animals and we let them know what the differences are. So just be looking for those differences when you're looking for a cash offer to make sure you know which one you're dealing with. If you are a seller and you have decided it's time to sell your house and you want more information, you certainly can go right up here to a video on the five biggest mistakes that home sellers make so you don't make them. And if you like this kind of content, you can go right next to me right here and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. Until then, see you next time.